Hi, thanks for joining me today. I've got another exciting demonstration for you. A proof of concept using Office Scripts and Power Automate. I've previously done a video on creating charts, pie charts and bar charts and line charts from data in Excel. Uh, and in the previous demonstration, I sent that data to Teams channels via the Flowbot and also via email. But I was asked a question, how easy is it to embed that chart into Word or HTML or a PDF? So that's what I'm going to show you today. Let's jump onto our demonstration. So here I am in my Power Automate and I will walk through this cloud flow, but the first thing I'm going to do is jump onto my Excel spreadsheet. So you'll note here I've got a couple of uh, columns of data. I'm going to create two charts today. The first chart is going to be a line chart based on the number of theoretical solutions I've created on the Power Platform community. And uh, if you haven't been there already, I, I recommend you go and have a look if you're struggling with Power Automate. There's plenty of folk there to help you out. So I'm going to create a line chart, like I said, with this data. And my second uh, chart of data here is going to be a pie chart. So I've asked a question to some uh, theoretical people. What is their favorite Power Platform tool? So being biased, mine is Power Automate. And uh, you'll see here I've got the, the highest uh, number here for that. So using this Office script on the right hand side, and this is really one of the exciting features now, now that it's made it into global release, is that you can build bespoke scripts to do as you please and call that from Power Automate. So what I'm going to do in this script is I'm going to query these cells A1 to B31, which is the data here and also D4 to E9, which is the data here. And I'm going to create both a line chart and a pie chart. And I'm then going to return those two images back to the action in Power Automate. So on my SharePoint document library, I have a Word template. And like I mentioned earlier, the Word functionality is a premium uh, action but I'll just jump into the document quickly just to show you what I've got. So the functionality or the developer functionality is only available to you in the desktop client, but it allows you to create dynamic content. And so uh, some of these values here, you'll see some placeholders for like the opening paragraph I've got in my document, the after quote paragraph. We also have a placeholder here for a quote. And then the most important thing are the two um, placeholders for both chart one and chart two. So our cloud flow is going to dynamically populate both of these images and a series of strings. So let's close that down and jump into our cloud flow. So you'll note the first action I've got here is the run script action which like I said just went live a couple of uh, months ago but it's been uh, in action for a good 12 months, I guess. Um, but uh, what we do is here, we connect to uh, OneDrive and we specify the file we want to be working on, which in this case is my Demobird 365 stats file, which you can see here we had open on the, the tab earlier. And then I'm calling the chart demo2 script. So if I just jump quickly back onto the Excel file, you'll see here, this is what I have called my script, chart demo2. Now, had there been any uh, input uh, parameters for this script, um, Power Automate would be clever enough to create some more little uh, windows here to, for you to provide data. So on to the next set of actions we've got here. I've got two compose statements. And these are creating the objects that are required in the Word document um, action that we have below. And uh, the purpose of this is just to specify the content type and also the content. Now, you remember that I mentioned that the script will return the results of the image images that are created, the two charts. So that's in the form of, of an array. And if you look at the expression there, you can see I have the result zero being queried, which is the first object of that uh, result array from that script. And then in our second image here, we've got number one. So that's calling the second, which is referred to by key one um, of our array. 
and it's these two objects that we will use later on in creating our Word document. So I've got two con compose action actions. Um, I'm going to close this one down here and I'm going to jump into the, the freebie version first, so creating PDF from HTML. So one of the first things I've done is to get the file content of a image file. And uh, the purpose of that really is just to create a header for my HTML file. So you'll notice that I reference, reference that further down here in my next action, which is to create HTML action or compose action, which I've renamed as create HTML. So don't go looking for create HTML action. It's a compose action. And uh, all I'm doing here is typing in the HTML code for generating an HTML page. And so I'm hovering over the dynamic content for the action above, which is the image file that I'm grabbing from my OneDrive. And you'll notice that I'm calling on the content key or um, object from that response in the action above. Now, one of the important things to, to see here is the image source uh, HTML string. I'm specifying that we're looking at an image here and it's in the format of base64. You need this if you're going to display images on HTML and therefore into PDF. Um, and another rather important thing to note here is the use of div. So you'll see that I've specified the width, which is very much an approximation. Um, it's uh, quite an experimental feature trying to get HTML converted into PDF using the out of the box actions. And you'll probably notice that there are several paid for or premium actions that will convert HTML into um, PDF. So this is very much an experiment here, and there are other examples of videos on YouTube. You can you can go and watch um, guys and girls experimenting with this. Um, but uh, overall, the height of the uh, div for a particular page, if you're looking to create page breaks, is round about 790. So you'll notice that I have the height here of 200, and add that to 590, we've got 790. Again, I've got another div here, which is a whole page, so it equals 790. And it's on this second div that I am outputting my two charts. So very much like the uh, compose action above here, where I'm calling on the result 0 and result 1, I'm having to use that uh, expression again down here. So using the output from the run script and the result, I'm selecting image 1, i.e the uh, item zero and image two, i.e. item one. And again, note the HTML string here for the image source and the reference to data image and base64. So that will include both images on a second page on this HTML file. And the next action, what we want to do is we want to actually go ahead and create a file, an HTML file, using that output from the compose above here. So now that we've created that HTML file, we want to convert it. So we're lucky that uh, in uh, OneDrive, we have the ability to convert files into PDF. And so I'm taking the ID from the action above, so this file ID that's been generated, and I'm simply converting that file into a PDF. And then once we've done that, we need to take the file content from this action and actually create the PDF file. So I specified my site, my folder, a file name, and the important thing not to forget, the extension. So always make sure you include the extension in your file name or it won't open. And then the file content from the action above here. And that will now generate our PDF. So that's our free or out of the box option for creating a document with embedded charts. Then. The Word document, which is the premium action, which you had a, a wee sneak uh, preview of earlier because I'd left it open. I'm using the populate a Word template action. And you'll see here I've got uh, various uh, strings of text which are going to be supplied to that template uh, Word document that I showed you earlier in my document library. And in addition to the, the text that you can see here, I have got the two compose actions for image one and image two. And 
For those that are wondering why are chart two and chart one in reverse order, don't ask. I really don't know because in the PDF document that I've created, I've got chart one first and then chart two second, but this particular action has decided to reverse them. Um, but the important thing is making sure that I've got image two in with chart two and image one in with chart one. So that's the end of, of that action. So very much like a previous example, this action here creates the file content. We still need to actually create the file. So I'm using the create file action and uh, I'm taking the uh, output from the action above here, which is the file content. And you'll see that in the bottom here. And again, specifying a name. And this time round, it's a Word document. So we need to make sure we've got the file extension .docx. And then, because I thought I would uh, demonstrate both uh, examples as PDFs, I'm going to convert this Word document into a PDF too. Again, using a premium action, but we're going to convert that document um, using the file above and the name that comes from this particular action. And very much like the Word uh, action before, this action will create just the file content. So we are going to have to use another create file action and we're going to use the file content from this previous action. Again, specifying a file name and making sure we include that PDF extension this time round and that will create our copy of the Word document as a PDF. Now, of course, we could save that file from uh, here, from the initial Word document uh, action into OneDrive and then use the freebie action to convert the OneDrive file, Word document, into a PDF. But I'm assuming here that as we're using the first action as a premium action, then we're using the conversion uh, action as well, also as a premium action. And then my last little piece of this uh, Cloudflow is just demonstrating that also you can save the charts that come back from these Excel Office scripts as JPEGs. So if you want to save those images and use them elsewhere, you want to go and uh, attach them to an item on a SharePoint list, or if you want to include them in an email as an attachment, or if you want to upload them via FTP to another site, you can take that output using that compose action from, from above, that object that we created, a JSON object, and you can save that file um, as a, a JPEG there to your SharePoint document library. So just to show that I'm not cheating, I have my SharePoint document library. I have the one document in it. I'll just go ahead and refresh that, and I'm gonna to go to my, my Power Automate Cloudflow, and I'm gonna hit the test button, and we're gonna go ahead and run it. So this process probably takes about 10 seconds to run. I'm obviously running both uh, of the scopes parallel. So I'll be creating both the PDF via HTML and the Word document and PDF conversion, as well as the final uh, JPEG file. If I just jump into my SharePoint document library, we can see some of these uh, documents already being created. So I'm going to jump into the first example here. I'm not going to have a look at the HTML itself. That, of course, is created in OneDrive. Um, but I've done the HTML to PDF conversion, and this is the file here. So if we just open that up, you can see my header image that I spoke about. And uh, I'm going to actively encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, comment with any ideas or feedback on this, on this video or any other videos. But the thing you're here to see is the fact that these two charts that are generated in the Office script are now embedded in my PDF. If I jump back onto my document library, I have the Word document. So remember I mentioned that it was a it had dynamic uh, content, uh, both these um, free text fields, but also a header here. Again, a little bit of encouragement, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube but the all important embedded documents, we have both the line chart and the pie chart. I have converted it to PDF also using that premium feature. And uh, again, we have the two um, charts embedded. And if I hadn't closed that last window down, let's just quickly 
open up my document library again. Here we go. The image file. So the all important image file. There we have our line chart. Now, just as a wee uh, extra demo, the uh, Excel script here, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and run it in real time. So, of course, I've called it from my Power Automate Cloud Flow, but you can also run it manually from within your uh, Excel worksheets. Now, one of the things I've got here is I delete the chart so that every time uh, I run on this sheet, I just create a brand new chart. But I'm going to uh, comment those uh, two expressions out and I'm going to go ahead and run it and let you see what happens behind the scenes. So we're running the script and here we go. We have both the line chart and the pie chart. Now, if I delete both of them and let's really skew the results here and say Power Alternate had 150 responses for their favorite tool. If we just run that again, you'll see now that the pie chart has the massive Pac-Man. So if anyone uh, was born in the same era as me, they'll know what I'm talking about. And apart from that little announcement on Alexa, um, that's me finished my demonstration. So I really hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any comments, please make sure you leave them below. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. And go and have a look at my other videos that I have um, those on Office scripts, but also the other Power Automate ideas that I've been sharing. Thanks again for watching. Cheers. Bye.